Hi, everybody. I am so glad on this episode of Words, Images, and Worlds to be talking with someone who, who really has a wealth of experience and wisdom in craft when it comes to world building, and that is author Julie Cherneda. Julia, uh, Julie, thank you so much for jumping on and uh, talking with me for a little bit. Well, thank you, Jason. This is uh, something that's been close to my heart for years and years and years. I actually was working in scientific literacy and science fiction before I sold my first book. So while I I was waiting on the publisher's slush pile, that's what I was up to. So it's it's, uh, it's really nice to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Always glad to talk about literacy. Um, Glad to talk about your work. And I see you have some some fantastic creatures on the shelf behind (laughs) you there that are currently overseeing this as well. Well, I have switched from four years of writing science fiction. I'm now back to working in a fantasy series, and mm-hmm. I always try to change up my office. Plus, I'm I'm quite uh, I have wonderful readers, and they send me things. Oh, so love it, love it. <laughs> and right now, you know, having toads around is is very inspiring. So we're we're, we're toading up, as I may say. I love uh, it. Oh, thank Love you. It. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I try to yeah. give them away, too, whenever I do a book event for a fantasy, my fantasy novels. I try to leave a toad where I go, but they <laughs> just keep coming. <laughs> oh, that's that's kind of a nice calling card as well. I love that. Is. People underestimate, you know, the, the wordy amphibian. They do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll mention you have a, an array of titles, uh, Trade Pack Trilogy, the books that are um, related to the Trade Pack trilogy being the Reunification series, Web Shifters. Uh, probably one of my favorites is To Guard Against the Dark. Uh, definitely one of my favorites. Um, yeah, so, that was so a tough many more. Right? That, that finishes up a nine book arc, and I knew it was coming. So I actually started writing fantasy to give myself a, a, a three year break before I had to write that because it oh, was wow. not like a culmination and an ending. But I wasn't actually sure it goes quite dark before the, the I won't say the light at the end of the tunnel, but it, it does get quite dark for me. And uh, it had to, it had, it's, it's a powerful story. So I'm really glad you like that one. That's called all of them together now are the clan chronicles. Yes. Yeah. And I'm always curious about the process of how those things come together. I, I'm picturing when you're world building, like, this whole wall of like sticky notes or uh, yeah. journals or whatever it happens to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I, I, this, this, this upper shelf was actually just packed with, um, with materials from, from the clan chronicles not that long ago. And it still has a little bit because I'm hoping to do another uh, book with uh, like fans of the series. I did one anthology where I invited other people to write in it. I don't know if you've seen that one tales from Plexus. And as an English teacher, I think you will find that you would really like that because it's um, and the covers by my, my wonderful husband, Roger. Oh, uh, love it, love it. What I did was I asked them to write stories because I just done to guard against the dark and I thought I'm done here. And their stories were so interesting that instead of writing little introductions to them, which I'd intended to do, I found myself writing a story around them. So oh. it actually reads completely like a novel. It's oh, another Morgan it. and Sira adventure, basically set a little bit, you know, before things get to the dark and dangerous side. Mm-hmm. And and it was such an, a wonderful experience. I'd love to do it again. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Um, I also, I'm a big fan of changing visions. I don't know why that second oh, yeah, piece yeah, of the, yeah, the web yes, shifters. Yes, and books are my favorite. They're, uh, she's where I throw all my biology, everything in 90% of the biology in there is the real thing. And yeah. it just looks so strange because I put it in an alien format but well actually it looks strange on earth too but we don't think about them that often but no she's she's great thank you and changing vision is a fun one the horrible hat yes yeah so so sometimes people assume I think that like the sciences live in their own world and then on the other hand you've got like reading writing and literacy and I love how your work brings those ideas together and says no actually they're they're not entirely separate things and uh, I think to craft a really strong story it it helps so much to have that scientific literacy background yes and I think to me and I'm sure to you part a really big part of literacy is is being a critical reader Mm -hmm. and being a critical reader not in the sense of of picking at flaws and things like that that's not being a critical reader it's 
it's reading something and, and wanting to know more about it, wanting yeah. to verify the source, wanting to um, learn more about it. And I think science fiction readers are, are very much like that. They're very literate. They get to the end of a story and they, they, well, they'll happily keep writing their own, you know, if, if it doesn't end the way they want. I mean, I'm like that. They will want more by that author. They will ask questions about the science that they find. Hopefully not overtly, but hopefully it's in there. And they will not accept if you've really done something wrong. They will they will let you know loud and clear. Mm -hmm. So all these aspects of, of, of being a, a literate person and and caring what the words are saying to you. Uh, I find that's that's really a big part of, of of science. Absolutely, it's a huge part of science, but it's also part of, of just being literate and being a good citizen as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, your work touches on those ideas of um, society and citizenship and uh, even economics in the, these really interesting ways, too, the, that I think make them really relevant. Did you ever see that one? I have not seen this one, but I'm gathering from the subtitle that I would really like this. Yeah, it's yeah. still in print. Yeah, or if you can't get hold of it, let me know. Uh, what the, if for those who are doing this in audio, this mm -hmm. is uh, my copy of my book, No Limits: Developing Scientific Literacy Using Science Fiction, and it has a companion anthology. And when I was working um, in nonfiction publishing, I was writing science textbooks. I was workshopping literacy with uh, teachers and students, there was a lack of material. I mean, if they sent kids to do a science fiction project, this reading project, they said, go get Dune. These kids haven't read more than, you know, anything like this yet. They're not gonna. Yeah. So I wanted the short stories. I wanted them based on curriculum. So they were quick and easy to use. But the whole idea is, is that by reading science fiction, you can become more literate about in every way, yeah. more critical thinker. Wow. And I, I, I think it works. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I can see that as being uh, its own curriculum in a way, an essential mm -hmm. text for teachers. I love that. Uh, is that, um, are copies available through your website or? It um, should still be available just on, on regular books, uh, like um, order it in from Amazon for one thing, you can do that. Um, I don't sell them myself. It is still technically in print. So you should, as I say, you should be able to just order it. But even from Barnes and Noble, they should be able to track it down. It's got an ISBN and all the rest of it. There's an entire series. I actually won the um, Golden Duck Award for science fiction, which is the Hugo for youth nice, and nice. Uh, for the series that goes with this, because I just did a whole set of anthologies based on science curriculum. Each story, each anthology gets a little more difficult to read the stories mm -hmm. inside as you get to the end, but they're more exciting. So oh, it's I kind of that. a very subversive book. <laughs> I quite like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, and I, I love how you you build the stories as you go, it sounds like. So there's more and more to tackle and grapple with. I love that idea. Yeah, yeah, so it's uh, it's wonderful. I mean, I've never had any authors say no to writing any of these, for any of these projects, and and certainly uh, uh, David Brin, uh, Greg Benford, and Greg Bear mm -hmm. um, all were involved at uh, when I was doing No Limits, and we did a lot of... Uh, of stuff in service for teachers at uh, Worldcon and at the uh, anticipation where I was Toastmaster, they gave us a full day in Torcon, they gave us full days just for teachers and teachers could come for free. And all day they got uh, science fiction in the classroom materials. It's, it's nice. It's nice to see that happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm curious about the authors, the worlds that connected with you as a young reader, what what got you into this world of story building and uh, story crafting? I can absolutely point the finger to two things, my one to the school library and one to my father. Oh. Um, it was the school library first. I was a prodigious reader. I loved, loved reading and I was getting super bored with what <laughs> I was reading. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to go to the, the shelf that was at my eye level at this our little school library. And it was the authors beginning with N. So I read every N along the row, trying to be inspired. And then I hit Andre Norton and that was it. I went, what, what is this? <laughs> what is this? This deliciousness, this imagination, this fantastic stuff. Uh -huh. So I devoured everything by her. I found Norse, of course he's been in there too. Um, and then just went straight to the science fiction section. And then Love my dad it. noticed what I was 
bringing home from the library now was, was all of this. And he read the popes when he was young. So he, he they were starting to come out again in paperback. So he started bringing me home Doc Savage and John Carter of Mars and every payday, there'd be, uh, you know, three or four books. And, and the fateful day he brought me home Tarzan of the Apes is, is now in memory of all over the place because I was so mad at the ending. I didn't know it was a series. My parents mm-hmm. didn't tell me. And my mom said, yeah, and she said, uh, she didn't say, here's the next book. It fixes it. She said, here's my typewriter and paper and you fix it. I love it. I was so excited that I was so angry and I was so passionate. And I typed away from very badly for that whole night. And the next day that was it. That was the bug was set. I just never stopped. So I can't say it was anything that inspired me to emulate it. It was more a case of of being told to fix it. (laughs) Which is sort of a sciencey thing, you know. What yeah. could possibly be different here? You know, that's my hypothesis. Yeah, I love the the question. What if? Love mm-hmm. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is one of the things about uh, No Limits that I really, really enjoyed doing was at the bottom of the pages. There's a what if, mm-hmm. all the way along, like like footers, all the way through. Because there's no end to how many of those you can have. And I wanted to make sure that everybody was constantly thinking, you know, hey, this is this is a science thing. What is a what 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 if? Yeah. And we had hired yeah. to do that. That's a job for science fiction writers is uh to speak to acting working scientists, to speak to uh people that are uh f- looking for uh ways to go outside the box. I could uh work with uh a psychology graduate class trying to give them better I- not better ideas, different ideas for their thesis projects mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and that sort of thing is I think that's that's one of the things we, we do very well in science fiction is are willing to explore outside the box we actually demand it. that's what science fiction writers and writers do well yes yeah. we just uh, we just don't accept not just don't accept we just always want to know the next possibility and and combine them and and if you have this and you have that which is another thing that The further on you go in science, the more compartmentalized you become. And I know I started off trying to do a joint physics biology degree at a time when they couldn't do that. So things just kind of got very messed up. But I I resisted the idea of having to specialize as long as I could, because you have to. And so the more you specialize, you get to the PhD and you've been working in research for years, you're doing incredibly important work, but you don't necessarily know that this would be so cool to Fine with it. Mm-hmm, How do you mm-hmm. find that out? And that's another thing I've noticed scientists who who delve into science fiction are, are very collaborative. And I yeah. think that's why. And that, that question of what if applies so well to um to creativity, to literacy, to science, but also as you're saying to research. Uh, I think that absolutely um, to the research. Yeah. 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 You always have dissertation. every I, science is a passionate creative activity. It has a, it's a discipline, but it has that, uh, there's always someone sitting in the dark, just imagining and thinking it through. And what if they do it all the time, they just make it look because they have to write it up and present it in a certain format. It looks far more, um, tidy Mm -hmm. than what Mm -hmm. I do. (laughs) Now, um, so I'm going to mention, and we can hit on, on any part that you would like, but, uh, going to mention this book. Ah. Yes, to each this world, um, which is the next book that will be released, I believe. Not the next book that you're working on, because I know you're. It is. It came out last November. Ah, so it's perfect. It is, it is out. It yes, is out. it is out. Yes, yes, and uh, it's it's been doing very well. I've had lots of great feedback on it. I'm very happy with it. Writing a standalone novel is uh, in science fiction is is a particular joy because you you have to wrap everything up. It's a particular tension because you have to wrap everything up. <laughs> but I I really wanted to do another standalone, and and I set my sights on this one for several years beforehand. So I guess I started. Uh, uh, well, they, they contracted it about five years before it came out, but I've been working on it for 20 or two, 20 or 25 years. Wow. Wow. And I, I imagine there's a nice, um, refreshing sense of creating a standalone story once you've created a nine book arc. <laughs> I imagine that's a, kind of a nice thing. <laughs> it's it's different. I mean, the first thing that you'll find this interesting is, you know, I did the trade pack first mm-hmm. and I did it back when I was in my first years of writing. 
And then I came back to them to write the prequel 17 years later. And my first thought was, I can't do that. I'm not this person. I don't even write in first person anymore. I don't know what to do. I mean, and what is this stuff I've got going on? So I had to not only research the work, I had to figure out a way to get myself back into it. So I said, you know what? I'm not even going to try to copy this or be who I was. I'm going to start right off, you know, third person. I'm going to go with a different flavor of how I do it because it's a prequel. I can do that. And then by the time I did that, rolled through, took my gap. When I hit the the finale, three, uh, it, it just worked. I could do it. But at first I was a little worried. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it came together uh, so nicely as as all of your work does and the rich detail that you bring and uh, I keep using the the word world building because the, that's just what comes to mind so to each this world being the the book that we're talking about any upcoming work current projects that are not in NDA country that you would like to to mention on the show sure I have uh three novels coming out one two three um they're all set in my fantasy series night's edge that began with a turn of light mm -hmm. and that's the one i actually built a model for a scale model and if you're curious about it you go to my website chineda.com and just go through the fantasy you'll find a link to a, a series of photos on how i built the scale model partly so i could write something completely differently than i write science fiction because i respect mm -hmm. fantasy's language and uh efforts and the, the characterization of landscape so much that i just really wanted to try to be not julie chineda the science fiction writer and i think i, I succeeded i feel i did and okay. so now i'm a change a change of place it's it's with my editor now it's finished except for revision, and it should come out uh, April next year. It'll be my 24th book in 2024. Wonderful, wonderful. Nice symmetry there. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. And, and uh, again, hat tip there to a storied career and more to come, um, 24 books. It's uh, quite a lot to explore there and quite a lot to enjoy. Thank you so much. It was, a, it was funny. My English was my favorite, one of my favorite subjects and one that I found quite easy. I just thought they were just giving us books to read. This is give me more, give me more. Mm -hmm. And eventually your schedule in high school for us, anyway, you reach a point where you just don't have room for it anymore. And I remember my English teacher was not happy with me, but I said, you know, it just, I got to take the math. I got to take the science. <laughs> and there's, there's, but I will keep going. And I, I, I hope they noticed that I did keep going. Oh, I yes. Did. Yeah. I did, no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned uh, Chernada.com. Any other web spaces that you want to make sure to share so that listeners uh, can... If you go to Chernada.com and hit the contact page, I've got all my socials there. I'm on Instagram, uh, Twitter. I haven't quite got to threads yet. I haven't actually been able to find it. It's brand um, new. It's brand I new. have several pages on Facebook. So uh, one for fantasy. One I have a writer's uh, spot there too called uh, Writerly Stuff that you can find and, and pop in and ask questions. So I try to be available. Wonderful. 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 Um, so I will link the website. I'll also link the uh, no limits as well. I'll, I'll find that and separately link it for educators. Uh, anything that I missed that you want to make sure to share? Oh goodness. No, this has been a marvelous interview, Jason. Um, I think one of the things that I've, uh, if there's writers, paying attention to this. Mm -hmm. The the one thing I will say is that it is such a fundamental skill. It doesn't matter what you do in life. If you're writing stories, uh, it will pay off in every other aspect of life. If you're reading, that will pay off in every aspect of life. These are not, uh, they may feel like great ways to, to kill time and be out of, out of the social aspect. It is the opposite. You are becoming a more social being and a more empathic person and a more um, a curious person the more you read. So I'm all for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lo love the possibilities for building empathy, for building, uh, as you mentioned, critical reading. That's so important. And when, as, as you said, when I think about being critical, I think about being thoughtful about the yes. world around us uh, and the world that could be. So uh, I appreciate that, that work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. And, and very much now, I think we need to be uh, 
critical in the sense of thoughtful. I like that. And, and because we need, we're, we're faced with so much news coming at us that things are dire, things are dark, things are, are, we can't do anything, but that's absolutely not the case. We have to do things and, and this is how we imagine doing them. In 2007, I did an anthology on polar uh, exploration that was, and we brought in students to do it as well. Um, and even then, there were some really innovative and, and wonderful thoughts about dark things that could happen with climate change and, and yet how we move past and how we survive. And I think we need those stories more than ever. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh, powerful work and lots of stories out there to be told and to be explored. So um, and thank lots you for of your toads. <laughs> oh, yes. Lots of toads as lots well. Of toads. Thank yeah. you, Jason. Thank yeah. you very much. For thank me. you so much. Uh, always a pleasure and always glad to, to talk with you. Thank you.